Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris here today and I recently did my seat height video to give a little bit of an explanation about kind of what seat height is but also what else to look out for that works in conjunction with seat height and John asked me a really really good question. He basically wanted to see how I sat on the Z400 and the reason that's important is because it all comes down to the ride triangle and the ride triangle is essentially the point from the seat down to the pegs up to the bars which when they're straight like that gives you this triangle now this sounds really really simple however in actual fact there's a lot that goes into it now if this area between these two points so between the seat and the pegs is too small the bike's not going to be comfortable because you're going to be cramped uh, if it's too long that's going to be more suited to a touring motorcycle where you're going to be spending long periods on the bike depending on how the interaction between the seat and where the pegs are this is quite like quite a straight shot down um, if they're further back that's generally for a sports bike or a race machine where you're a lot more aggressive um, you've got forward controls on cruisers, uh, you've got mid controls on cruisers. There's so much that goes into it. It's a really quite complex thing. It's really simple on the surface, but then it's really complex when you actually look at kind of how it's all worked out by the manufacturer and how it suits the bike. So I'm going to jump on this one now. This is our Ninja 400, obviously. And now it gives you a bit of an idea of the angle of my legs and then the overall kind of amount of room I've got between the seat and the peg height. I wouldn't want much less room in that area than I've got here, but it's actually a very nice kind of measurement because my knees are, my knees are down here, as you can see, and there's quite a bit of room up here as well. So if I was a larger rider, there's more room to get your legs up. And then obviously you're also locking in. Like if you chucked on some on some, I uh, can't remember what they call them off the top of my head, but they're basically like the rubber stick-ons that help you grip the tank. Um, you've got plenty of room there to grip on to the bike itself. And then obviously you've got the reach to the bars. On all the beginner bikes, the reach to the bars is not that aggressive. Um, this is, you know, sports bike styled for a beginner bike. However, with that said, it's still very upright. Like my Daytona is much more aggressive than this. and. What also comes into it is if you've got quite a high seat height, which most of the race bikes do, and then you've got your seat, your, uh, your clip-ons, which are normally much lower, so they're down here, it actually cants the rider much more aggressively forward, which is another thing that you need to think about because it could be the same actual ride triangle, but the kind of the, the slant of the triangle, the angle of the triangle is much more aggressive. And that again pushes it towards a sports bike rather than just being a normal bike. So there's heaps that goes on into this kind of stuff when they design the bikes because they, you know, they'll figure out what kind of rider sizes they're thinking about. You know, who's the ideal rider who's going to be jumping on a bike like this? And then they work around that. And then they obviously want it to suit a much larger range of riders. So there should be plenty of room for all of those different people. So anyway, no matter how you look at it, there's a lot more that goes into this than you would think. And so while obviously a low seat height is a really important feature for these beginner bikes, you also need a great kind of peg design and a peg placement to make sure that it's also comfortable, um, it's an easy thing to ride, it's not too cramped, and also that you can really lock into the bike, which is a, is a big concern for me because there are some bikes I can lock into really easily and comfortably, and there are some which just don't suit me at all, which is obviously a concern because the ones that just work for a rider are the ones that the rider's gonna think is a great overall bike. Anyway, so hopefully this has shed a little bit more light on the ride triangle. Um, this is really only scraping the surface of that kind of area but you know it's a good starting point for new riders and like I said it's not just the ride triangle itself but it's also the angle of the ride triangle and the interactions between each of those points because if the bars are too far back that again is going to affect comfort if they're too far forward you have to commit too much if they're too low that's what creates a sports bike 
on these beginner bikes they're not too low because as they get lower you get more uh, less steering lock and it's much easier to drop the bike with low speed maneuvers and to get into trouble because when you're when you're down here you're a lot more committed and you know it's it's just a it's a it's a sports bike whereas with this you're getting more like a bit of a naked bike but with some sports bike ergonomics which make it a nice easy thing to learn on so hopefully that's been a little bit of a help for you today don't forget to hit sub leave a comment let me know what you think about this particular topic and i'll be back soon stay safe out there